the GOAT, the greatest of all time. One of the most highly debated topics among MMA fans ever, but instead of doing a short breakdown, let's go through each of the fighters' careers and rank them based on five categories. Record and title defenses. How many times were they able to successfully defend their belt and what was their career record overall? Strength of competition. What was the strength of their competition over the entirety of their MMA career? Dominance. How dominant were they over the entirety of their MMA career? PED usage slash allegations. Did they ever pop for PEDs? Were there ever allegations made against them by fighters, fans, or media members? And lastly, effect on the sport. What effect did they have on the sport as a whole and the future generations going forward? Every video we will add to the top 10 list until we have a complete breakdown of, in my opinion, the top 10 greatest fighters in MMA history. Demetrius Johnson has so far amassed a professional mixed martial arts record of 32, 4, and 1. He made his MMA debut on April 28, 2007, racking up 10 straight wins before dropping his first fight by decision to Brad Pickett. Brad, one punch Pickett. DJ would rebound well, rattling off four straight wins entering the UFC in that time. He would next be granted a bantamweight title shot against Dominic Cruz. Size would ultimately play a big factor in that fight as Cruz would hand Johnson his second career defeat. He would next fight Ian McCall and in a fight that was originally scored a majority decision win for Johnson would later be overturned to a majority draw. They would be scheduled for an immediate rematch and in the fight DJ would win a clear cut unanimous decision. From there, he wouldn't look back. As he won the inaugural flyweight title in his next fight, DJ would rattle off a record-setting 11 straight title defenses. During this time, Johnson had very public disputes and disagreements with the UFC and the way they were treating him and promoting him. Any response when you heard that he says he, he feels like you're bullying him in the media and you're not marketing him right? We're not marketing him right. We built a TV show around him. We put him on Fox many times and tried to build him and it is what it is. It's not me. Right. I, I'm, I'm bullying you? How do you bully the pound for pound best fighter in the world? The media claims he's the pound for pound best fighter in the world. Right. I think Conor McGregor is the pound for pound best fighter in the world. I was streaming on Twitch. And somebody in a Twitch chat came in and goes, hey man, did you hear about the Ultimate Fighter they're gonna do next? I was like, what you talking about? He goes, they're gonna do the Ultimate Fighter. It's gonna be all the champions and they're gonna fight you and the winner gets to fight for Bernardo. I goes, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> the next day I got a phone call from Dana White. Oh really? Dana White, Dana White never calls me when I was in UFC. He called me, he goes, you dumbass, you just ruined this whole thing we're trying to set up for you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, well, I just found out on, online from a, a random dude on Twitch and I gave him my honest opinion. And then he goes, Sean Shepard didn't call you? I was like, no, he didn't call me. He goes, all right, bye. Hangs up. Next day, I get a call from Sean Shelby. Hey, yeah, bro. Uh, we're doing this. Uh, I was like, too late. Yeah. <laughs> too <laughs> late, dude. After having defended his belt a record breaking 11 consecutive times, Demetrius would then face Henry Cejudo in a rematch. And after a thrilling affair, we had finally seen the end of DJ's title reign in the UFC. Can't wait to see you again, sir. 
Mighty Mouse Johnson, ladies and gentlemen! The UFC took Johnson's loss as an opportunity to make one of the most bizarre moves in UFC history, making a quote-unquote trade with one championship in exchange for newly out of retirement Ben Askren. According to reports, UFC and one championship have arranged a fighter trade. The UFC will release Demetrius Johnson, allowing him to sign with one, while the Singapore-based promotion will release Ben Askren, allowing him to sign with the UFC. They made a deal, and the deal was they take Mighty Mouse and we get Ben Askren. Johnson would immediately thrive in one championship, rattling off three straight wins in his arrival to the new promotion. After successfully winning the Flyweight Grand Prix Tournament, DJ would be given a title shot against the champion, Adriano Marais. After a back and forth affair, DJ would unfortunately fall victim to a grounded knee by Marais, rendering him unconscious for the first time in his career. Johnson would take more than a year between fights for the rematch with Marais, but in that time he was not inactive. He would participate in a mixed rules fight with Rod Tang, a well-known Muay Thai specialist, rounds 1 and 3 being Muay Thai, rounds 2 and 4 being MMA. DJ would survive the first round onslaught to ultimately sub Rod Tang in the second round. And in the rematch with Marais, Johnson would get a sweet revenge in the form of a return knee KO, claiming the one championship flyweight title. So, now that we've gone through his career, let's take a look at where DJ ranks among all five categories. Record and title defenses. DJ's record currently sits at 32 wins, 4 losses, and 1 draw. He had 11 successful title defenses in his run as UFC flyweight champion. Strength of competition. This has always been the biggest argument against Demetrius Johnson, and I struggle to understand why. He fought the highest level of competition early on, and continued to do so throughout his career. I'm not saying his competition was necessarily the best, but I believe that the stigma of low-level competition came solely off of the amazing performances he had in the cage, and that narrative is beginning to shift now with his performances in one. With that all said, I give Demetrius Johnson's strength of competition a 7 out of 10. Dominance Demetrius is nothing short of a master in the cage, especially during his title run. Johnson would consistently put up dominant unanimous decision victories as well as highlight reel finishes like flying suplex armbars. With minimal hiccups in his time as champion, overall I would score Johnson's dominance a 9.5 out of 10. PED Usage and Allegations I'm gonna keep this one short, I don't think anyone has accused Johnson or anyone believes DJ has cheated or used PEDs in any way. In this category, I give Johnson a perfect 10 out of 10. Effect on the sport. Unfortunately, this is where I feel Johnson lacks a bit. While putting on dominant performances and highlight reel finishes, something never caught on about DJ to the mainstream crowd. Ultimately, his mark on the sport seems that it will only be one known to the hardcore fans, as it seems the UFC is attempting to scrub him from the history books. So, while being a dominant champion and a trailblazer for the division, his lack of popularity ultimately holds him back a bit. Overall, I would rate DJ's effect on the sport a 6 out of 10. After we tally up all the scores, that will bring us to 32.5 out of 40, which with the 32, 4, and 1 record, 11 title defenses, and a title in another organization accounted for, places Demetrius Johnson at my number 3 greatest fighter of all time. Do you agree with my placement of DJ? Do you think he should have been rated higher or lower? Leave a comment below. And if you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next episode of our GOAT tier list.